2,000 years ago, an amazing event took place. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ was born when the Spirit of the Lord God was poured out upon all flesh. The Spirit of the Lord God was poured out upon all flesh, and in the midst of His church, God's people begin to prophesy. The church is about prophecy, tongues, interpretation of tongues, the manifestation of the Holy Ghost with signs and wonders and miracles, all demonstrated by the works of the Holy Ghost and the working of miracles, the gifts of healing, the gift of faith, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits, the word of wisdom. Right now, we want you to lift your hands towards heaven. Let the power and the glory of God come upon you, overwhelm you. The Spirit of the Lord has been poured out upon all flesh. I know that people have presented a false gospel and another gospel, and the world has run after a church that has no expression of the Holy Ghost. But that doesn't change anything. It doesn't change anything because we're going to be that church that the, that the Bible, that the Word of God declares us to be. Under all the social pressures and all the things that Satan would try to do, we're going to be the church that Christ Jesus purchased with His own blood and that the Holy Ghost came upon and baptized with His glory. We're going to be the church of the living God. The Word of God expresses that. The living Word, Christ Jesus, gave us life and existence. Hallelujah. Thank you, mighty God. Hallelujah. Right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, the power of the Holy Ghost comes upon you. <laughs> the Spirit of God, right now, overwhelms you. Hallelujah. And the expressions of heaven begin to flow through you right now. Expressions of heaven begin to flow through you right now. The expressions of heaven begin to flow through you right now. With tongues, the language of heaven and prophecy. That the Holy Ghost begin to express Himself through you. You have to let go of your own expression so that the Holy Spirit may begin to express Himself through you. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the living God wants to take over every part of your life and begin to express himself through you. <laughs> Just yield to him. Just yield to the glory of heaven. Just yield to this wonderful company of the redeemed, the born of God, <laughs> whose names are written in heaven. Hallelujah. Santa Eloko Sipaya. You are the holy people of the Most High. Sapra Kiste Prapaya. And a river of heaven has been placed within the inside of you. The expressions of the living God. Blood and water testify. Of this resurrection life. The price you pay. Crucified, set me free. Bread of life, perfect sacrifice. Messiah, Messiah, in our fall.
Thank you so much, Father. Thank you so much, Father. Thank you for the precious blood of Jesus. If you've never received today this wonderful work of God's love and mercy, for His blood, you just take His blood, the blood that Jesus Christ poured out 2,000 years ago is as alive and as effective right now as it was 2,000 years ago. I mean, you think about the cost that God paid so that our sins could be washed away. And I pray today that the reality of it strikes you deeper than ever before, that your eyes are open to the splendor and the beauty of it, and that the results of being everything holy and acceptable to God will be that result in your heart and your mind and your thinking. So right now, if you've never been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, Father's pleading with you. God, the Holy Ghost is the pleader, and He's saying, come be washed, come be cleansed. Without the blood of Jesus Christ, you're dead in your trespasses and sins. And as soon as somebody begins to allow God to apply His blood to their life, the Holy Ghost will come and overshadow you, and a miracle will take place on the inside of you, and you'll become a part of God's family. You become, a, you become endued with His genetics, so to speak. You become a new creation filled with the glory of heaven. Everything old will pass away. You become a citizen and a recipient of eternal life, the life of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father's love for us is beyond anything that can be described. And God, the Holy Spirit, wants to fill you up with His love. He wants to, in the filling up, as He fills you up with His love, all the emptiness and all the loneliness and all the sorrow and all the sadness that comes from a death life. Somebody said, what's a death life? It's being, it's being alive, but not alive spiritually. It's being alive physically, but you're dead to the things that God the Holy Ghost is doing right now. See, the earth is filled with His glory. This place is filled with His glory. Many people are dead to the reality that the earth is filled with His glory. They have no ability to respond to the Holy Ghost. and They have no ability to respond to the Spirit of the living God, to the workings of the Almighty God, the Creator of heaven and earth. But today, God has purposed that you should be made alive unto him that you should be able to respond and as soon as you're made alive that's why as the Holy Spirit is poured out upon all flesh they begin to prophesy because their inner being their emotions and passions are made alive to God they become excited about who God is their eyes and their hearts and their understanding are open and instantly they begin to rejoice in all the love and all the blessings and all the goodness that has been poured out upon us and until that time, you can't understand why on earth a person like me is so excited 
and what it is that I'm mumbling when I go to Stakata Masifre Pakara no Motoya. You don't understand. But God wants you to understand that's why Jesus died 2,000 years ago and his death is so real and it's so living and so powerful but it was as though it happened today. He went down into hell and with a shout to the spirits in prison he commanded that they lose their hold, loose their hold upon mankind. Yeah. Yeah. And he rose up from the dead. And the same Holy Ghost is here has made us alive because of righteousness that he gave to us. Hallelujah. Your body, your body is may your body may be corruptible, as Paul said it dead. But I'm telling you, there's a healing anointing in the house to heal you for whatever disease you got. Whatever sickness is, all you've got to do is begin to seek the man, Christ Jesus, who's been exalted in his eternal glory as the eternal God, which is everlasting, from everlasting to everlasting, forever and ever. In other words, he's been God. He was made man for a short period of time for you and me so that you and I could be born. I praise God for the mothers today because through the mothers we got born. We got here, praise God for the moms, they need a whole lot of credit. But I'm going to tell you right now, through what God did through His only begotten Son, that day that the a spear pierced his side right under his rib and the blood flowed out. We became born of God, whosoever would call upon the name of the Lord. Just like God took a rib from Adam and made Eve, he took the blood right from the side of Christ Jesus and made his church so that we're born bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. Hallelujah. It's a family time over here. This is about family. If the church isn't family to you, we want you to be born in the family today. The church all over the world, we're getting ready to go all over the world, practically, Asia to Africa. Here in the next couple of days, we're leaving. And everywhere we go, we find our family. We find our family in China. We find our family in Nepal. We find our family in India. We find our family in Africa, Norway. Everywhere we go, the family of God's there, having been washed in the blood of Jesus. Today I'm asking you a question. Have you been washed in the blood of Jesus, every fiber of your being that has made you a new creation, holy and acceptable to God? Have you been washed in the blood of Jesus to the point that your conscience no more condemns you because of sin, because it's been removed? Are your garments spotless? Are they whiter than snow? Has every stain of sin been removed? This is the gift of God. The gift of God is that the Holy Ghost could come upon you. Maybe there's some of you here today, you don't know what the gift of God is. Cornelius found out about the gift of God when the preacher Peter came along. And all of a sudden, as they were talking, the power of God came upon them. And they all began to speak with a heavenly language and prophesy, just like God had described by his prophets in, in the former days and old, old times in the Old Testament. And today the same thing can happen to you. Some of you haven't had a Holy Ghost flow in such a long time. You've lost the joy of your salvation. No Holy Ghost flow, no joy of salvation. Oh, Holy Ghost begin to come upon you and overwhelm you. And your whole being's going to become excited with all that God has done for you. And you're going to begin to tell of all of His wonderful and marvelous works. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want you to lift your hands towards heaven. I want you to let God change your atmosphere. I want you to let God change the way you're thinking. Hallelujah. You can read the Bible all day long, but only the Holy Ghost can make the Word living in your life. Hallelujah. You can read the Bible all day long, but only Christ Jesus and the Holy Ghost can make the Bible alive in your life, a reality. 
tonight. Father's going to do great things. And tomorrow night, God's going to do great things. And Tuesday night, God's going to do great things. In this place, for you, because we've got evangelist Tim Hall, and he's going to talk to you about the wonderful works of Jesus. Somebody said to me, they said to me, is the ministry of Jesus still alive? I said, not unless you're going to do it. They said, is the ministry of Jesus still at work today? Not unless you're going to participate with it. And it seems to be that there seems to almost a, the minority is willing to participate. Everybody else wants just to find a seat of religion. God's invited you into a relationship, and we don't want anyone leaving this place today without those things which Jesus paid such a high price for you to have. Hallelujah. How many of you are appreciative for your mother? Well, I really hope you are. I really hope you are. And I'm sure that every one of you are. But what God has done for us goes far beyond all of that. You know, in many ways, we look at the Holy Ghost in some respects, almost like a, a motherly role, you know. Of course, we know the New Jerusalem is the mother of us all. The New Jerusalem is a special thing that God has done where all that have been willing to obey God and walk with God are brought together into one, into one place, into a place called a city. But that event happened by the Holy Spirit who came upon us and brought forth the new creation so that we were like a newborn babe. Hallelujah. I want this to hit you. I want this to get, I want to break past the Southern California nonsense of a religious bell. And the power of the living God come overwhelm you and you have an encounter with something far greater than you. Far greater than your personality, far greater than your thinking realm, your intellect, your sorrow, your sadness, your madness, or whatever else. God, the Holy Spirit, is here right now. He's, he, he, his, all of his delights are with you. It's true. He doesn't look at you and, and see all your faults. Did you know that? He looks at you like he did at the woman at the well, and he bypassed all of her problems, all of her failure, all of her sin, all of her unholiness, all of her unworthiness, and said, just recognize who I am and the gift that I have. And I'll put on the inside of you a wellspring springing up of the very life of the living God. The gift of God. The gift of God's here for you right now. I want you to break past the stuff. Some of you were born into religion. I'm telling you, maybe I'm just talking to people right now on the web. Maybe I'm not even talking to anybody in here. But I know some of you were born into religion. You weren't born into the kingdom of God. You weren't washed in the blood and baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. And today we want to see that change. I never want to be in front of people and not plead with them like the Holy Ghost pleads. Actually, the Greek word for the Holy Ghost is the one who pleads. He pleads with men. He's pleading with you right now. And he's saying, it's just like Jesus in the book of Revelation. He said, I'm standing at the door of your heart and I'm banging on the door of your heart. I'm banging on the door. It's louder than that. If any man will open the door, just open the door. He's not going to push the door down. He could. He's got enough power. His word framed the heavens. He could with just a, a sneeze. I mean, less than that. It would take no effort at all for him to push the door down, but he leaves it to each man's will. Many of you have been indoctrinated with a mixture of Christianity, Hinduism, Buddhism, Muslim, Islam, and Judaism all wrapped up into one and said this is it. An ecumenical, wild-eyed, theological idea of men. But the Word of God lives and abides forever, and it's unchanging, and it's written in the most simple human language possible. It's, in, it's just really not possible to misunderstand. It's just you have to bypass all of the stuff that you have maybe justified in your life. The things that you've allowed yourself to believe. And let it come over here and get yourself washed up. Hey, Amen. I'll tell you right now, the Word of God's like a big old scrub brush. Hey, Amen. It'll scrub you up. It'll clean you up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for your love. Hallelujah. Whew. The presence of Jesus is here. The presence of Jesus. The Master's here. Sovereign Lord and Almighty God is here right now. 
He wants to change everything about your life. He wants to heal your body. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, that same Holy Ghost, is who Paul's talking about there in Romans chapter 8. The same Holy Ghost produced within you everything that pleases God. Hallelujah. And he'll produce within your life, he'll bring to your life everything that God has provided. Healing to your body. Woo, hallelujah. Rejoicing to your, to your being. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo-hoo. Mighty God, we worship you. Mighty God, we worship you. Mighty God, we worship you. Thank you, Father, for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for the moving of your presence in our life right now. Thank you, Father, for the supernatural signs and wonders and miracles that are just a natural consequence of you being here in our presence, of us being allowed to be here in your presence. Hallelujah. (laughs) Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just begin to offer up a praise to Him. We're just begin to offer up a praise to Him right now. Begin to offer up a praise to Him. With your microphone. Begin to offer up a praise to Him right now. Just begin to offer up a praise. Begin to offer up a praise to Him right now. Begin to offer up a praise to Him right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Begin to offer up a praise to Him right now. Thank you, Jesus. Ha ha. It's you we adore. Ha ha. Well, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus, for this outpouring. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You know, Daniel found great success. How many of you know that Daniel found great success? You know, when some demon-possessed ruler who doesn't care about anything or anyone can recognize that the great that the spirit of the living God is on the inside of you and promote you to the highest office of the land, you're doing something right. You recognize that? We don't really have many people like that in America. There's not many people like that across the world. And I discovered that what happened was Daniel just praised God three times a day. He wasn't pleading and interceding. It wasn't supplication and intercession prayer. We just praise and worship. I know. I'm like, go tie your robo, sheep, tie ya. It's supposed to take us to a whole nother level of praise and worship that Daniel didn't even have access to. Are you listening to me? It's true. You know, we find out that David was able to organize a bunch of singers and worshipers in the temple who prophesied with praise and thanksgiving. Ah, you know, you some of you guys have come dragging in all your stuff. That don't even belong in the house of God. Your worry, your issues, your distractions, your concerns, your earthly interests. We're going to start meeting people at the door and examining them whether or not they're bringing stuff into the house that shouldn't be here and just help you deburden yourself. The Holy Ghost was poured out on the day of Pentecost and what happened? There wasn't a, there wasn't a, a, a music group, a bunch of singers. We turned the things of God into merchandise and left the Holy Ghost behind because we're selling CDs. They were baptized in the Holy Ghost, and as they begin to rabo piatoro, we see in verse 12 of the Bible that everybody that was there could hurry here in their own language, as the Sotaramangela was nothing more than an expression of the wonderful works of God. We want you to be able to enjoy heaven. Jesus couldn't. It's just a terrible thing that Jesus would have died in vain for you. There's too many people who've called upon the name of Jesus and supposedly became a Christian, have nothing, and they and their experiences. The majority of things they're experiencing has nothing to do with what God has given and what He purchased for us. 
And so we want to change that for you right now. I only want to change that for you, every person in this place right now. Everyone from the platform all the way to the very back row. We want you to, we want you, we want you to receive what God has for you right now. We want you to, we want you to receive what God has for you. Receive what he has for you. Receive what he has. Receive right now is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Receive. Receive right now is peace that passes understanding. Receive right now. Receive right now. Receive this love that goes beyond all knowledge. Receive right now empowerment. Receive confidence. Receive cleansing. Receive everything that belongs to a whole new realm of living. Receive it right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, mighty God. Go ahead, offer yourself to the Lord. Go ahead, offer yourself to Him. Go ahead, give yourself as an offering. Offer yourself to Him. Hallelujah. It isn't hard. <laughs> Just offer yourself to Him right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we are an offering to you now. Lord, everything about me, I don't hold nothing back. I tell you right now, I'm just going to be honest with you. You're holding 95% of your emotion for yourself, and you're giving God about 5%. Let's move that on up a little bit. Let, let me tell you where a lot of people make a mistake. They're pleading with God to give them something. God's pleading with you to give him something. I think people, they just hold on to their life, their problems, their issues. They're pleading with God to give them something. No! You just start worshiping him and giving all that you have and all your desire and all your interests and all you want. Start giving yourself over to God. <laughs> I had somebody recently, they, a preacher, they emailed me or texted me. I can't remember which one it was. And they wanted me to lay out for them the proofs and help them understand about the first fruits offerings and how much they should be given because they just got some new whatever. I don't know what it was. I didn't pay much attention to it. And, all these things. They say, come on, man, that's just Old Testament stuff. And about 10%, some first fruit offerings is about everything now. Then about 10%, nothing. It's 100% everything. Tell me about no first fruit offerings once a year. We're not coming up for the Passover once a year and for Pentecost once a year and for the Feast of Tabernacles once a year. We've been brought up into a heavenly realm to live out the life of the living God, I tell you. You have been commissioned to live the life of God, to live the life of Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody said, well, I'm not Jesus. No, but you're supposed to live his life. Ah. Come on now. Turn me up. Nobody can hear me. Doesn't look like it. Come on now. Come on, man. Listen to me. I'm going to tell you right now. Listen, here's what I'm going to help you with. I want you to begin to quit acting like the rest of the Christian community and start giving yourself holy to God every day. I'm going to tell you right now, get your emotions all wrapped up in what's going on in heaven and get your emotions out of all the other earthly interests. Quit being, quit living a, a, a conflicted life with mixture. And just start living what God has empowered you to be. Hallelujah. Salt of the earth, the light of the world. Hallelujah. Come on now. Come on now. I tell you right now, 
Father has made us his heirs and his co-inheritors, and he's asking us, what should we do? What should we do? And many he can't even hear him. He's looking for somebody to tell him, well, we're going to bind this right here. And he said, okay, I'll bind it in heaven. And he's going to say, we're going to lose this over here. He said, okay, I'll, I'll lose it in heaven. What else do you reckon we should do? Come on, people. I calculate from the word of God that we've been endued with all power from on high. Yeah. Quit making a religion out of Jesus. Quit making a religion out of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to tell you what Jesus said. Jesus said, get in or get out. But I don't want no more false representation or I'll spew you out. Hallelujah. That's what he said. He said, get baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire or go live like the devil, but quit hanging out here doing the stuff you've been doing. Huh? That is merely human. Come on now. Oh, yeah, you could say hot or cold. <laughs> well, I'm going to break it down for you in Jesus' name. I want you to get passionate about God. I may never see some of you again. Some of you that are watching by the web, I may never see you. You never may never hear me again. I'm not going to have your blood dripping from my hands. I'm not going to leave you without a chance to begin to step into all that God has for you because you taste this and you're going to get thirsty and hungry for more. Woo, hallelujah. <laughs> you start living a whole day full of goodness and you won't want badness no more you live a whole day of joy and you won't want sadness no more you live a whole day free of condemnation free of condemnation peace and you won't live in guilt want to live in guilt and condemnation ever again come on there's a river come on there's a river There is a potential on the inside of you for ex inexhaustible expressions of God to be flowing out of you and to you. God has filled you up so that you can continually be filled. Hallelujah. 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 Father wants his church full of prophecy, full of revelation, full of knowledge, full of the doctrines of God, full of the expressions of the Holy Ghost. Man has had his time too long. I say, uh, show over. Show over for men. Now let the Holy Ghost begin to rule. Let the champions of God begin to rise. Let the great outpourings of the Spirit begin to be seen in the land. I pray that you'll rise up, be valiant for God. And that I pray that you'll begin to come into this place and offer all your being to Him. Not 10%, not 5%. All your being to Him. A living sacrifice, hallelujah. A living sacrifice is one that's burning on the altar with the fires of God. And it is completely a heavenly realm. That's what a sacrifice is. The, the angels went up in the flame in the offering of the sacrifice. It's as though people talk about a gateway, uh, open heaven. I'm telling you right now, it happens through the sacrifice, the offering of Christ Jesus that ultimately then made you and I an offering. Hallelujah. I'd like to grab a hold of some of you I'm looking at right now and, and, and just begin to dance around with you. You would feel all weird and awkward, but I'm telling you right now, suddenly if I could get you past your own human consciousness and issues, uh, the power of God would begin to surge through your life. You, uh, listen, come on now. Come on now. God is expecting something. He demands something of you. Listen to me. Father God is looking at you and he's demanding a river. Father God is looking at you and he's demanding a river of divine expression through you. Don't you tell me he's not. It's the fruit he's looking for. It's the fruit he's looking for. It's the fruit he's looking for. And the only thing that's clogging it up is you. The only thing that can clog it up is you. Hallelujah. 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 So just let the praises flow. So just let the thanksgiving flow. <laughs> Dear people. Hallelujah. 
Halleluja! Halleluja! Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Ha 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 ha. Woo! Ha 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 ha. You are of the seed royal, born of the spirit, born of the word, born of the resurrection, endued with the anointing of the power of the Most High. Listen to me. You can live and be whatever man said you are. You can live in an oppressed mentality in a defeated position. Because all you've done is taken your advice from your friends and your peers and those that are around you that, dis- that subvert you and define what culture's supposed to be. Or you can be liberated today and be who God's described you to be. It's your choice. Now I'm going to tell you right now, we're here fighting for you right now. I promise you, we're fighting, we're battling for your soul right now. You know what? We're in conflict right now that no longer will the church be shrouded by all this human self-interest and worldly compromise. We're in conflict right now. Contending for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints that the church might be the fullness of him that filleth all things. Oh, yeah. And we, we, we'd like for a few other people to throw in and help out a little bit. But if you should decide not to, no worries. We can do it on our own. Because greater is he that is with us than all those that are in the world. <laughs> 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 Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Maya taco prapa se vaya la ramoso. Maya la ramoso pa ki se ya ropa poya. Mata ya la ramoso pa ya ramakus. Maya la ramoso pa ya la masipa. Maya la sopra pa pa ya fahora. Maya sipa. Maya la ramoso pa ya ramoso pa pa ya ramoso pa ya every. Hallelujah. Woo. Woo 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 woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to just tell you, that's getting just a little bit closer to worship. That's getting a little bit. I'm going to tell you, God wants only those songs and only those sermons that are an overflow of the moving of the Holy Ghost. I was in Zambia last year. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke through me, just a thunderous word. And he said, I'm not interested in all the singing. I'm not interested in all the preaching. It's not what I want. And it just left it there. And the people that were in the place, they're all preachers and ministers and leaders. And it was kind of shocking. And the Spirit of the Lord said, I want that singing and that preaching that comes as a result of the flow of my Spirit. The moving of my power. Too much we've been under the pressure to be showmen. Too much we've been under the pressure. And it's gone from the pulpit all the way down to the pew. And it stinks. Pew is properly named in that sense. A pulpit to a pew. Those are terrible sounding words. You know what I'm saying. Come on. Come on, would you be dedicated with me? Would you be valiant with me? to return the church of the Lord Jesus Christ to the master. Let's return the church. Let's return our lives. Let's return our gathering together unto him and let the Holy Ghost be in charge and understand there's basic principles to that. It's got to be truth. It's got to be real. Real truth means that it's absolutely what's in your heart, your passions to do. It's got to be by the Holy Ghost. It's got to be by the Holy Ghost. It can't be by our own motives. It can't be by our own ideas, our own inspirations, but by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 
you know, Evangelist Tim Hall is getting ready to come. And usually we just wait towards the end of the meeting and let people at the end of the meeting come and, you know, give. And you guys are givers, and we're so blessed by that. And the more you give, I mean, it's like the finances is the token of your heart. And it's good to give everything. Somebody said, well, i got to be responsible to my commitments to men. You need to be responsible to your commitments to God. What commitments have you made to Him? How important are the things that He's done for you and given them to you for free? How valuable are they? And I pray today you'll make them exceedingly valuable. Hallelujah. And that you don't come and just begin to give because you feel like you're under restraint or because, you know, you're going to be awkward. It's going to be an awkward moment if you don't give or somebody's going to think lesser of you. Because that's an entirely wrong category by which to give through. But let the power of God, and this is all about worship and praise, because giving is a part of worship and praise, and we've made it something other than that which comes from the heart. God desires truth in the inward parts. He wants it to be real. Not by constraint, but willingly, happily. Hallelujah. And Father says to us on the back side of that, He says, don't, you, don't be concerned, don't be concerned. You sow generously and you're going to reap generously. I want to make sure that all grace abounds unto you, that you have all sufficiency. That's why, that's why Evangelist Tim Hall could do so many crusades this year. Mass evangelism crusades because God's promised him that he'll have all sufficiency for whatever he needs. That's why we can go and do what we're getting ready to go do in India, in Kashmir, in Zambia, in Cuba, in Nepal, in China this year. Because we have all sufficiency. Somebody said, where do you get all the money from? My, you're amazing. No, I have grace. I've been given all sufficiency. It's there when I get there. It arrives on the time. Hallelujah. And then this and people, Father one doesn't want to leave anybody out. Father doesn't want to leave you out. Some of you, I can tell you haven't been dancing around much this week. Somebody asked us, how do we stay so healthy? Come here, honey. Come here, Mom. Somebody said, how do you stay so healthy and young looking? Because, you know, I'm, I'm not telling you how old she is, but I'm 57. Okay, I'm 57 years old. Why, why, how do you stay so young looking and healthy? We dance around in the Holy Ghost and continually filled with the Spirit. We live, we live in divine health. There is a place where you participate with divine health. See, by his wound, we were already healed. That's the divine health promise. Every day I get to eat the bread, the children's bread, which is healing. But that doesn't come unless you touch the realms of the anointing. It touched as the woman of the issue of blood, the hem of his garment, knowing how to receive the virtue, how to receive the power. The anointing of his glory. Amen. You got anything to say? Okay, I guarantee you if I got after, if I got after and said, no, go ahead, preach, fire would come. So come worship the Lord with your giving. Happily, joyfully, because you get to, excited about it. Praise the name of Jesus. Come on, man, let's have a little bit of shout, a little dance, a little joy in it. Mangandalea. I tell you, if you don't get, listen, if your offering doesn't make you happy, it wasn't big enough. Let me say it. You didn't listen to me. You didn't hear me. If your, offer, if your offering didn't make you happy, it wasn't big enough. It didn't have enough of you in it. Because when you start giving yourself to God, you're going to get happy. I said when you start giving yourself to God, you're going to get happy. It's going to be an exciting moment. People standing around waiting for God to do something for them. He say, hold up here. I got it done. I got it done. <laughs> it's like somebody coming to you and saying, you need to get that work done, you promised. You said, wait a minute, we've been finished with that. What are you talking about? There's not enough shouting in here for me. It sounds like a Baptist church for sure. You listen to me. Those of you who have sickness in your body and disease in your body, there's a breakout in the shout. Get to shouting. You listen to me. No, no, no. Get you. Hallelujah. And I pray that that gets over. I pray that it gets over into your everyday life. Evangelist Tim Hall, come here. Tim, come. Come. Do you want the microphone or do you want the lapel? 
everybody. Give a warm welcome to our dear friend. Tim and I have been close friends for a very long time. The first time I ever preached, got to preach in a mass evangelism crusade. It was on a Friday night in Papua New Guinea, in Lake Papua New Guinea. And I don't know how many tens of thousands of people were there, but there was a lot of people. There was a lot there. And um, Tim told me that morning, said, you're going to preach tonight. And I'm like, man, this is the big night. It's Friday night. You, this, is, you know, this is Friday night. This is the big night. You need to do this. This is the big night. Now you're doing it. And he's just such a blessing. He's such a father. He's such a blessing to us. He's such a mentor. I promise you, you want to be in all the meetings to, to this morning, tonight, tomorrow night, and Tuesday night. I thought, I thought he was gonna, Tim was going to be able to be with us on Wednesday night. He's not going to be with us on Wednesday night. You want to be here because he's going to talk to us about signs, wonders, and miracles. He's going to talk to us about flowing and the gifts of the Spirit. Understanding how to let that glory of heaven that has been established in you be developed through you. Amen. I yeah. love you so much. Pastor Mark. God bless you, sir. Hey, guys. Man, that is it. You want your Bible? That's a big Bible, Reverend. You can have it. It's kind of in your way. No, it's powerful. It's powerful, though. Yeah. Well, how good is it to be back here in the abiding place? I, I feel like I'm up there in one of those, you know, Anglican, hallelujah, yes. You feel like you're up there, don't you? We come today in the presence of Almighty God to witness the betrothal of this man and woman in holy wedlock. It's like Winston Churchill as a preacher. What a joy it is to just be together. Hello, Rob. Uh, hello, Caleb. How are you? There's Randy's over there. Rob's over there. And I look and I go, is it Randy or Rob? No, that's Rob. That's Randy. That's Rob. Both similar. That one of them will have a beard on one stage and then take it. Oh, you got yours on or off, Randy? Go on. All right. Are you all good? I'm just looking around. I'm just looking around. Don't mind me. I'm just looking around. Kids are growing. There's more kids. There's no. No. That wouldn't be any. Look at you. Doing all right? Do you remember me? No? Yes? Not sure. Just embarrassed. Nothing serious. There we go. Dan, how are you? Where's Summer? She'll be back. Where's Ruth? She's gone. Kate's gone. Everyone's gone. I got up to preach the left. Oh, there you, Kate. You, you were there. Just moved over there. It's a good spot. We got some very, very. Ex How many believe that life's exciting? I mean, Brad, there's, it's an exciting business, isn't it? It is. It's an exciting sort of a business. I'm, uh, I'm 70 in two years. Can't believe it. I don't feel a day over 66. 66. 67 years and a half. And I tell you something. I'll tell you something very honest. Time goes like that. And the years go. And don't put things off because they get away if you do. You've got to be on top of this thing. Time waits for no one. It'll go past. Time goes past. If you're not redeeming the time because it's evil, it will get past you. It'll get through your fingers like sands through the hourglass. The time will get through. And you look back on 10 years and think about all the things you wanted to do in 10 years and you realize sometimes you look and I go have I gone anywhere uh, sometimes it's a good thing to look at the end of every 12 months and go did I advance have I made an impact or have I just gone around the same mountain again because I think it's time for us to stop going around mountains and start climbing to new heights um, we had a we had an event last year that has impacted me very greatly in fact we're going in there again um, in a month or so, first week of September we're going in, 
There's a little place, it's not big, it's an island called Vanuatu. How many have heard of Vanuatu? It's a beautiful tropical island. And a friend of mine's been over there, he's opened seven, church, seven schools over there. And he said, would you come and do a crusade? And I thought, well, the whole city's only got 40,000 people, which is, you know, it's a good size. But if you're going to put a lot of money into a crusade, then you want to, or a campaign, crusade's probably not a word that's real popular at the moment, but into a campaign, you, you want to get the best results you can. And uh, Josh, Ali, how are you? Both looking magnificent. Um, just, side, just, just friendly greetings as you go. Just greetings, isn't it, Jonathan? Just greetings. It's correct. Um, so you want to get the biggest possible impact for what you put in. And I knew it was going to cost me a lot of money, but I went in there and it was very strange conditions. We were over there and it was very weird conditions. The sea had steam rising off the sea. And the sea was so hot, the guy that was with me said, uh, he was a, bring, we're bringing a lot of college students over with us. He said, the water's really hot. He said, you swim out there and you don't cool off, you just get hot. And then the rain was coming and it was like horizontal. And I said to the guy I was with, this is weird weather. Um, is this slightly cyclonic? And he said, uh, it's known to be. Three days later, four days later, we got home maybe a week and a cyclone hit with massive force. What do you, you call them hurricanes, don't you? We call them cyclones because down there, I think they must spin the other way or do something different. And uh, we call them cyclones. We call aluminium, you call it aluminum, we call it aluminium. We call tomatoes, tomatoes and potatoes, tomato, p- potato, potato, I don't know what we call stuff. But anyway, well, we do things unusually. But the cyclone hit and smashed that place. And we'd gone over there to plan a crusade and we contacted them and said, well, what's the story? We put a fair bit of money into it. And uh, so we waited for a while and we went back into the citywide crusade I took a team with me of about 68 or 70 people and we got started with maybe 3,000 or 4,000 in the meeting and the power of God began to explode and the team were out on the streets and they were starting to get miracles everywhere. And then on about the third night, we call, I called to bring the deaf. I didn't call the deaf because they wouldn't have come, but I said, bring the deaf. And we lined up 35 deaf people across the platform and I went up to the first one and laid hands on the first one and the power of God. It took me a couple of minutes, uh, Ruth, to, good to see you. An old married lady now. <laughs> I knew her when she was three. Hello, Pastor Tim. Can you do a drawing for me? <laughs> so I prayed for the first one. It was really hard. And finally the deaf ears popped open and I prayed for the second one. I remember turning to a young man from Texas and I said, tell me, Tucker, his name's Tucker, Tucker the Texan, and uh, Tucker, do you believe that God can open this girl's ears? He says, yes, sir. I said, get up here. Up he came, and those ears opened, and then we, I had students coming up one after another. By the end, 35 deaf were healed, everyone on the platform. Um, three, that were, three that were mute. One of them was mute, deaf and mute from birth. That was the pastor's daughter, hearing and speaking. And by the end, in a city of 40,000, we had over 10,000 in the meetings. And uh, in five days, 14,000 of the city came to Christ. And uh, the streets were full of miracles. The place was filled with the miraculous. And now we're, we're going back again. So I was just about to leave there and I was having lunch with a guy. And he said to me, Tim, you know, we've had a big impact, but there's so many problems in this country that we, we, right at the roots, don't get dealt with by the church or the elders. And he said, you know, that 90% of the girls in this country or the young women that go to have a baby, 90% of them, the father vanishes and runs away. I said, that's a little bit like the Western world. Um, Young blokes are able to get a girl pregnant, but they haven't got the brains for the response or the commitment to responsibility. They biologically can be men, but they haven't got... uh, a man's heart as big as a pea. They uh, don't think with their heart. 
And just think with their hormones. And uh, it's a major problem around the world that's just being pushed by the media from every angle to, to go and have sex without any idea of responsibility or anything else. And the young blokes just run like cowards. And I, something in me said, it's time to go back here and hit this place now. You've gone in on the miraculous. Now go back and believe that when you go back, you're going back with a, with a spirit of conviction and that's going to bring some terror. And uh, I don't want to go back as a nice preacher. I don't want to go back as a nice preacher. I want to go back as a whirlwind. I want to go back as a Holy Ghost tornado. It's, uh, it's actually time to start to hit nations with cyclonic force. The Holy Ghost can come as a gentle breeze, but on the day of Pentecost, he came as a great roaring, like a mighty thunderous wind, and they ran from everywhere to find out what it was about. People see the Holy Spirit as this nice gentle dove that gets easily frightened off. I've discovered the Holy Ghost doesn't get frightened off, and don't mess with him. He is the comforter. But Ananias and Sapphira met him. The Holy Spirit. Someone say, oh, the devil did that. No, the devil didn't do that. I feel it's time for nations to see the fury of the Spirit of God. To see the unleashed power of God. Not just, not just nice preaching. Not just nice, delicate preaching. I don't even like the word nice much anymore. I think it's time for some... See, one of my weaknesses that I've had to repent of is I've always loved gangster movies, but I, I, I just think sometimes that we need to have a little bit of a... Okay, okay. You want to have a chat? Come on, let's have a little discussion. <laughs> time for us to go into nations. So we're going back in there, and uh, I've been just believing God to get a good team together. We're now over 80 people going in there, and uh, all day I train them train them in the mornings say to them let's look at your hands what what do you got in them and now repeat after me tis God who trains my hands for battle my fingers for war and I say you are a weapon I mean don't even see these as hands anymore these are these are like something out of a I mean you've got all these all these movies about all these stupid superheroes the the Hulk who goes green or or Spider-Man or, and all due respect kids, if you love Spider-Man jumping around and, and Superman and Iron Man. And I was forced the other day to go and see the movie, The Civil War of the Superheroes. And I was watching it and I thought, this is probably prophetic of the church. We have all these mighty gifts trying to kill each other and, and jealous of each other. But we ought to be the valiant men and valiant women. We ought to be... I mean, they've got their powers, you know, their role. <sighs> I'll let you in on a secret, they've got nothing. they got nothing. All these superheroes are going to save the world. God wants to raise up some people with some, uh, with some real powers. I mean... I mean, God is raising some people up that understand power. They understand the power of the Holy Ghost. The anointing of the Holy Ghost. I, mean, I, we were, I used to think about going in and doing crusades and getting a big crowd and a lot of people saved. Now I think, God, I want to touch that city. I want to touch that nation. So we're going back and you say, what's your goal? We're going to hit that place so hard. You know, when the earthquake hit San Francisco at the start of the last century, it shook the city. But what followed it was a shaking that made that great earthquake seem like nothing. It was the whole of Sousa Street revival that shook that city and shook this nation and they're still shaking and there's still tremors and shaking from that. And so I'm, going to be, I'm believing God that Vanuatu is going to be saved.
All right, I'm not, I'm not even preaching yet. I'm just, we're just saying hello. That's all. We're just, ha- you're, we're just having a little hello. One of my friends, we're going up to New Guinea, and next year we want to take, do a whole series of crusades culminating in one very big one um, and take the nation. That's the, that's the plan. It's being formulated. I will talk about that later, Pastor Mark. But there's a, there's a plan happening. And uh, what started all this was one of my friends went up there and he found out that in Parliament, there is, in Papua New Guinea, they were a, very much an animus society who made all their totems, especially up in the Sepik River, and they made the crocodile, the, the name for the crocodile up there is the Puk Puk, and a mosquito is a Nat Nat, and a frog is a Rock Rock. And so um, if the... Uh, Lick, lick, rock, rock, emi kai kai am the nat nat, and the big pla puk puk, emi kai kai am rock, rock. Uh, that means that the big, uh, the big frog ate the little mosquito, and then the big crocodile ate the big frog, the little frog. Whatever. It, it is ridiculous, but it sounds good. It's, uh, I can teach you that later. But So they've got frogs, and they've got totems, and they've got all sorts of sexual totems, and all sorts of animal totems, and the crocodiles revered. And so in Parliament, they've got a big totem, a great big totem pole. And this totem pole has all these symbols on it. And one day, the Speaker of the House, who was a Christian, got really upset about it, very, very upset about it, and decided to chop it down, a bit like Gideon. And so the Speaker of the House went in when there was no one there with either an axe or a chainsaw and chopped whole pieces out of it and chopped it up and made a mess of it. And they weren't happy. So he's worth a lot of money in it. And, uh, but he was the Speaker of the House, who's the most powerful man in the House. So he had to get up and explain what had happened. And he got up and he said, we are no longer a nation governed by these gods. Aren't we a Christian nation? Aren't we, aren't we a Christian nation? Then why have we got this big totem? We need something different here. And said, he said, I'm so sick and tired of us thinking about the old days and the old idols and the old demons and the old sorcerers that I got sick of it, as we all should have, and cut it down. And they looked at each other and they clapped. So now, now that totem is being dragged out of there and it's being replaced by a huge stone with a big thing on top of it with a big open Bible and a flame burning to say that the flame of God is on this nation and we are not ruled by demon spirits, but we are ruled by the Spirit of the living God. And so there's a dedication day later this year where they're going to have a big march. And uh, I was supposed to speak at it. I may still, if I kick up enough noise and uh, push my case a bit harder, I may stay on and speak at it because I think I should. Um, speak at it with the band, and so I think I'll, I think I'll just make my presence felt it with the committee organising this, and explain to them that this is how it's going to be. <laughs> but there's a dedication day where the Bible will be carried from the stadium, and laid in Parliament as a statement: this nation no longer rules under the demon powers, but under the Word of God. And uh, whole nations are turning to God. Things are happening on planet Earth. Let me let you in on something. It's not all doom and gloom. I mean, if we look at the world politically and American politics, let's not even go there. But uh, if we look at the world right now, it is certifiable. But I'll tell you something. In the chaos of the world is the greatest opportunity for evangelism that has ever existed. The greatest opportunity to do something big for God, the greatest chance to make an impact on our generation is right now. The greatest day of evangelistic opportunity and power is now. The greatest day for you and I to rise up and shake shake ourselves and say, hey, it's time to go to another level. It's time to fulfill my destiny. It's time I'm 67. I know I only look 65, but 
since I saw you last. When did I see you last? Did I tell you my mum died? 99 years and 10 months. People said, Tim, you can't live too long, you're too fat. I said, mum lived 99 years and 10 and she's fat. She played a bit of gridiron, a bit of American football as a linebacker. She was pretty good. Only a cu- couple of seasons. Handed out a few concussions to people and had to be banned from the game. But no, she was a good, good player when she's playing. I love my mum. She's in heaven now. Giving them a hard time. She was grumpy. She's very grumpy with me. I don't know how the angels are handling it. She'll be up there sorting things out. The Bible says we'll rule angels. She'll be up there ruling the show. I had an angel appear to me the other day and said, is that your mum up there? It's all okay? Yeah, yeah, it's good, it's fine. I'm lying, I have no idea. No angel came to me telling me that. Just made it up. Just made it up. All right, I'm going to preach. Is that okay? So if you can believe with me for this crusade... In, in, over there. Then we're going back into Venezuela. I just was, went into, God opened up these doors in South America, Colombia, Venezuela. Yeah, I'm going to Colombia this year. I'm in Bogota. And uh, I was talking to some friends from Colombia and they said, you've just been to Venezuela. I said, yeah. They said, we don't even go in there. And then when I was in Venezuela, they said, what are you doing here? No one comes in here anymore. It's a bit crazy time there. I said, I just felt to. Oh, good. Good. And we're going, we're going to go and have some big open air crusades and had some remarkable stories there. And then we're going back into New Guinea and going into Japan this year and, and uh, just planning crusades and want to fit in with some of the stuff you guys are doing. And you just got to go with everything you got. Like someone says, aren't you nervous getting into some of these countries? Well, God s- said to me clearly, I can get you into any country. No guarantee we're getting you out, but we can get you in. How many want to do something significant? How many want to do... Yeah, this place, this place is a special forces training centre. Oh, I, mean, I mean, if you're a guest today and you go, this place is full on. Yes, uh, correct. Well, yeah, did it take you long to work that out? It's, uh, this is church on steroids, Holy Ghost steroids. Amen. All right. Now, I want you to turn with me, please, to... What's a good book? What about the book of Hezekiah? Hezekiah 7, verse 4. First one to get it, 50 cents Australian. Hezekiah, who's got it? Hezekiah 7, quickly please. Put up your hand as soon as you've got it, Hezekiah 7. I'm reading, reading from the NLS, the New Lithuanian Standard. Have you got it? Who can't find it? Who's, a, who's actually looking? Put your hand up honestly if you're looking for the book of Hezekiah. There's no such thing. That's pathetic. That's sad. If that's in this church, how would we be in other churches? Turn with me please the book of Mark. Pretty easy to find. Matthew, Mark. Mark 5, if you're from South Africa, I'd like you to turn to the book of Mark. If you're Pastor Rodney Howard Brown, I I, I mean, I'm preaching today from the book of Mark. Hallelujah, Mark, chapter 5. I'm going to ask Adonica to come up here and help me with the reading. Hallelujah. No, I mean, it's great to be here back in San Diego. It's been a while now. All the political mayhem, I I mean, you don't know what I'm dealing with. I mean, I'm straightening things right out. Hallelujah. No, I I mean, I've I've seen some stuff on the web. I have. Pastor Rodney, if you're watching right now, praise God. One of the greatest inspirations in my life is, is Dr. Rodney Howard Brown, one of the great men. It's a great privilege to imitate him. Hallelujah. <laughs> Father, anoint your word, I pray right now. 
come with your touch and your power in a great measure. In Jesus' name. Everybody said? Mark chapter 5 is a fantastic chapter of excitement. The book of Mark, which uh, almost certainly, from what I understand anyway, was probably Peter dictating to Mark John or something along that line, but whoever wrote it uh, understood a bit of excitement in God. A lot of excitement. Everything's immediate. It's like, here it is. This is what you get. It doesn't lead in with long genealogies or anything. It just gets straight into it. It just hits it between the eyes. And it's, uh, if you want to build your faith, Mark is fantastic. Early part of Mark, just read the miracles and, and they cover everything you can imagine. Mark 5, you have, you have the great storm that's, uh, that's been rebuked and Jesus shuts down a hurricane with two words, be still, be still. I defy Superman, Batman, Spider-Man to shut down a hurricane with two words, be still, be still. They marvel, they say, what manner of man is this? That when he speaks, even the wind and the waves are obedient. In fact, people constantly were saying, what a word is this? For with authority he speaks to the devils and they come out. Jesus said, the word that I speak, the words that I speak to you, John 6, 63, they are spirit, spirit and life. We can preach words, but I don't want to preach just words. I want to preach words that are spirit, that are transforming, that are alive, that are active, that are sharp, that cut the fine line between soul and spirit, joint and marrow, even to the discerning of the thoughts of the human heart. They said of Jesus, never a man spoke like this man. No one ever spoke like him. The disciples must have been shaking their head. Was that really a storm? Am I imagining it? The Bible says the water, the wind ceased, and the water went flat. They sailed across to the Gadarenes and there was a demonized man who'd been obviously, obviously demonized and kicked out of his community a long time before who lived in the tombs cutting himself with stones and they arrived over there and the man came running down the beach and fell down before Jesus and worshipped him <coughs> and the demons besought that they might go into a herd of pigs and it was the first example in the Bible of deviled ham and they ran down into the water and they drowned 2,000 pigs. That's a lot of demons in one man. They must have marveled again. And he said to the man, go back. Don't come with me. You go back and tell your friends and tell your family, tell everybody. It was an incredible story. And they turned around and they headed back and they got back to Capernaum and got out of the boat. And as they got out of the boat... Now they are met by one of the head men of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And he is with his entourage. This guy is one of the head sharangs of the whole... Do you use that word, head sharang? It's an Aussie term, head sharang, big shot. One of the leaders of the synagogue. And he's come and he's in his beautiful whatever they were wearing and, and uh, threw himself down on his face before Jesus in worship. He said, my daughter lies at home. She's critically ill. Would you come? And Jesus said, I'll come with you. And they were heading off to Jairus' house. It's been an eventful day. There's been a massive storm, a hurricane still, a demon cast out. It's now morning. They've come back, and uh, now they're traveling to the head of the, of the synagogue. And as they're traveling, a little woman with an issue of blood for 12 years. That little girl's been dead for 12 for the same length of time, this woman has had an issue of blood. The word that is used for her disease is a mastix, which is a word which is used for a scourge. It was an agonizing, like being scourged, a painful, horrible situation in her body, which had caused bleeding in her body for, for 12 years. The same length of time the little girl had been alive. And she came in the press, and let's pick the story up here. She came in the press behind. This woman had lost everything. 
chapter 5, verse number 25. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood, she'd had this bleeding for 12 years, and she had suffered many things of many physicians. Medical skills in those days, I don't think we would have appreciated. I don't appreciate a lot of it today. I went to the dentist the other day just to check up on a couple of things and my last three visits I've lost teeth every time I go there. I just don't like to visit them anymore, not even socially. Just went over for a cup of tea at their house the other day and there were pliers sitting by my cup of tea. She'd spent everything she had. It doesn't mention a family. It was her money. She'd lost all that she had and Instead of getting better, she grew worse, and she heard of Jesus. She heard of Jesus. She heard of him. What did she hear from her? Who spoke to her? Who had spoke? What did they say to her? She'd heard things about him. There's something about hearing what Jesus can do. There's something about your testimony and my testimony. There's something just about going back to the story of this guy in the Gadarenes, and obviously that was, she wouldn't have heard yet what had happened there. But I love the story there because the Bible says that Jesus cast out the, the spirits of legion, there's thousands of them, into the pigs. And the Bible says, firstly, that the demons besought him. Parakaleo, they, they beseeched him that they could stay in that district, that they could stay there in that district in those pigs. Let us go into those pigs. They begged him. And then the, after the, they were gone, all the pig owners came in there and the farmers came in and they beseeched him, get out. The demons are saying, let us stay in the area. The uh, people of the area are upset about the pigs. They're saying, get out. The man gets delivered. and said to Jesus, I want to come with you. And he said, no, you go back to your family. Go back to your friends and tell them the great things that God has done. Go and tell your friends and your family. Start with your family and your friends and then people outside of that. So he must have gone back and told his family. Have you ever thought when he went back to his town, when he went back to his village, where he'd been hunted out, run out, and he came in, knocked on the door, and he said, I would imagine, try to picture the scene, knocked on the door. Who's there? It's me, your husband, George. Pick the name. You can't come in, George. You know, you've been run out of town. They're going to kill you. They said they'll, they'll kill you if you come back, George. Sweetie, I, I'm different. Well, please don't come in, George. You know, you're a violent madman that cuts yourself with stones. You're nuts, George. George, you're like a fruitcake. You're as nutty as a fruitcake. Please go away, George. Martha, I'm changed. No, Beryl. Beryl, I'm changed. I'm changed. Honestly. George, if I had a telephone, I'd ring the police. I'm going, to let some, I'm going to let some pigeons go down to the police station. Now a crowd's gathering out there. And someone says, Hey, it's George. George, is that you? Do you remember what he did last time? Mm -mm. Get some rocks, guys. They're picking up handfuls of rocks. Get out of town, George. Hold on, fellas, I'm different. You know I'm different because if, if I wasn't, right now I'd be attacking you. Do you remember? <laughs> He's got a point, Charlie. He would have been. <laughs> what do you think, Roy? Mm, there's change. He'd have killed someone by now. All right, George. What's happened to you? We see that some difference. 
What? What? Now his wife, Beryl, she's outside. Yes, he does seem a little different. His eyes are not rolling and his head's not spinning. Why don't we just listen? Out come the family. His mother-in-law. She's sceptical. Yeah, don't look much different to me. Matter of fact, good thing I've got the rolling pin. I'll fix him. I'll get him out of town again. She said, hold on, guys. Just let me tell you. I was up there in the cave. You sent me out there. I lived out there for so long. Have a look at me. I'm covered in scars from cutting myself. Some of these are still fresh from just a few nights ago. But something happened, and all I can do is tell you what happened. And then, if you believe me, let me stay. Otherwise, I'll leave you all alone. But this is what happened. I was in that cave. And this incredible storm, I was looking out, and a storm rose up that was unbelievable. The wind was howling, howling through the place. It was, it was ridiculous. There was lightning flashing everywhere, and it seemed like this storm had come straight from hell. And everything in me was going crazy. And I started to cut myself and scream. And the other guy in the tomb here, he was screaming and hiding. And, and the others that were here, it was mayhem. It was crazy. And the storm was raging. And suddenly it stopped like that. And it went from raging wind and everything blowing to complete peace. Total peace. I could feel the peace. I could feel something that was not natural. I could feel something that was even starting to calm me. It was as though something had happened that was eternal. And then I watched and I saw the sail of a little boat. And I thought, how could they have survived that storm? There must be something about this little boat. This boat has come through that storm. And then I felt it's coming for me. That someone in that boat is coming for me. I couldn't explain it, but I could feel it. I could feel it in that boat was an answer to my hell, to my torment. All of my focus was on this little boat coming across and I had a compulsion to run and find out what was coming my way and suddenly I couldn't wait any longer it was morning it was the sun was rising it was there was something in the air that I could smell there was a fragrance of something that seemed to overpower the rotting smells and the filth and the diabolicalness of this world I was now in. I started to walk, and yet the urge was so strong, I started to begin to run. Then I found myself sprinting. I could feel everything within me screaming, and yet something within me was saying, run, run. And yet I could feel everything wanting to tear me apart on the inside. It was chaos on the inside. And I ran, and... I got to that boat and a couple of big guys, a couple of big fishermen were pulling that boat. They had ropes and they were pulling it up onto the shore and, and I wondered what was going to happen. I thought, this is my moment. There was hell raging, but what is going to happen right now? And over the side, they dropped a board and I suddenly saw a man who was unlike any person I'd ever seen. His very presence radiated something that caused everything inside me to try and hide and escape. And for a few moments, my mind began to be clear as I looked at him. I'd never seen anybody like him. As he walked towards me, I knew that he had crossed through that storm and risked his life just for me come for me and I found myself lying on my face 
somehow worshipping this man. Worshipping him. Declaring against everything that was screaming to hate him. I could feel myself saying, you're the one. You're the one. You're my answer. And he walked towards me and stood in front of me and everything within me trembled. Every devil within me, this legion of demons within me was screaming and hiding and cringing like terrified animals. And it seemed as though he loved me but was now speaking to them. It seemed like we were separated. Like the love that I could feel to me as a person was so real, but the hatred and strength that he held and the authority over these things made me convinced that this man must be the Messiah. And he spoke to them. Who are you? And they used my voice, but I heard them say, we are legion. For we're many. And then I could hear them screaming inside me. I could hear them screaming and beseeching. Leave us alone, thou Jesus of Nazareth. Leave us alone. Have you come to torment us before our time? And I glanced and his face full of love and light. And yet his eyes carried a strength that surpassed anything I could dream. They seemed to cut through that whole atmosphere. And like a sharpened sword, they cut through the very atmosphere with a control that I knew was going to change my life forever. And these things started to scream, send us into those pigs. Please don't let us leave this district. Put us into those pigs. And he spoke to them. And like a herd of birds, like a flock of birds, they, I could feel them flying out of me, one after another, flying out of my body. And, and I lay there Free free and I looked into his face and I realized I was looking into the face of God himself and in a moment of time I went from a tormented broken soul to one in love with the son of God and I said to him there's nothing here for me I'm rejected I'm cut off family, my town, my relatives, and he smiled at me, and with a knowing look and eyes that only a, a minute before had filled with a strength and a horror towards the powers of hell that were in me, now I looked into lakes of love so eternal that they were beyond comprehension. And he spoke to me. And he said, go back to your family and your friends. And I've come to you today with his instruction. Firstly to you, my family, to tell you there's one who can still the storm who can destroy the works of the devil that can change you forever change you forever and he's changed me and as he spoke the glory of God that was fresh on his life began to permeate every one of them tears began to run down their faces Son dropped on their knees. And they said, we have to meet him. And the crowd said, we've got to meet him. When can we meet him? When can we meet him? I don't know, but I 
think he's coming again to this district. I just have that feeling that he's coming back and you can meet him. Tell us when he comes. We want, we want to just see his face. We want to just see. We just want to see him. And that whole place was under the glory of God. And I imagine he was back with his wife and his family and reunited. And she said, what are you going to do? He said, what's happened to me? I have to tell everybody in Decapolis. I may be away, away for a while, but I'll be back. I've got 10 cities to go to. And I'm just going to go and tell them what's happened. I'm going to take some of these guys with me. I'll show them my scars. I'll show them my ripped and torn body. I'll show them where I cut myself and tore myself, and I'll tell them about the one who breaks the powers. And he moved on to the next city of Decapolis, and the place melted because they probably knew his fame. He had controlled an entire region. And he probably told them, do you remember the, the tombs that when you went down that road to my city, we screamed and met you on the road and put you into horror. He said, that was me. But I'm new. And they began to ask the question, what can change this man? What can change him? And he went to the next city and word began to spread that there was a man in Galilee, there's a man from Jerusalem. There's a man born in Bethlehem, lived in Nazareth, but he's no ordinary man. We believe he's the Son of God. And the word came, and maybe came prophetically, maybe God anointed this man, and he said, He's coming back to this region. He will come back. He will come back. And we read in Matthew 14 that he did indeed. And when he arrived, they ran to him from every city. They ran from every city because one man had gone with his testimony of the delivering Jesus. You see, there's something powerful about our testimony. Did he know much scripture? Just knew a person. Was his doctrine sound? He knew a person. Was he deeply trained? He knew the master. You say, well, I don't know too much of the word, but do you know the master? So I haven't really done Bible college. Do you know the master? I've had people come and say, Pastor, could you come over to this house and lead this person to Jesus? I said, you can introduce him. What's wrong with you? Can you come and heal this sick person? No, you do. You do it. You're a believer, aren't you? There's something, and I'm a bit off the track here, but that's probably not a bad thing. There's something about taking your testimony. We might not even get far into this message today. I... I'm on a road that feels pretty good and the scenery's good, so I'm just driving. And I've probably told you this story before, but I'll tell you again. Some years ago, my mother spoke to me and she said, your uncle John, is, he's got cancer, he's dying. I, I like my uncle John. Have I told this story about uncle John before? There's the uncle John story. I liked uncle John. He used to, what did he used to call me? Timothy Tittlemouse. I had some crazy name. All my relatives used to call me something stupid. My father used to call me Glaxo or Squatty Rickson. In fact, I was christened Timothy. Uh, no, it wasn't. I was christened Gordon Stewart Hall. But they started calling me Tim after my grandfather, whose name was Tom, but they hadn't named anybody Tim after Tom. So they called me Gordon but named me Tim. And I uh, was confused. But Uncle John had pigs and... He had a crook leg. Uncle John had a crook leg. And they were always saying, don't fall over in the pig pen or they'll eat you. And I used to have pictures of the pigs eating Uncle John out there. I thought that'd be interesting. And I was on a farm. You know, 
That was a few years back. They had no electricity. They used to have an old icebox for their food. They had a radio and you could listen to the news. They had no TV. We didn't get TV till 1960. No TV. Then we got all the American shows and memorized them all. But everything. I'm not going there, but I've memorized every song from every one, especially the westerns. But the farm out there, you drive out on this old dusty road. It was in the Mallee, which is desert, but there's a river goes through there, the Murray River. So it's real desolate country, but, they, but it's fantastic because of the water. It grows anything. Amazing what some water does in an arid land. And I used to go out there on the farm. We'd get bog going out there and you know, they had dogs and they used to have a dog called Lucy and they'd spelt the name wrong. Well, I remember L-U-S-Y, Lucy. And I thought someone out here, even I knew how to spell Lucy. But anyway, she said, your uncle's dying. Would you pray for him? I said, and the Lord said to me, don't pray for him, go and see him. I said, Lord, it's 300 miles, 350 miles. He said, go and see him. Is that clear? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Drove there, got out onto the farm, and my cousin Charlie, I get on really well still with cousin Charlie. He's a bit crazy, but runs in the family. But I pulled in there and and I said, Chaz, uh, I've come to see your dad. He says, he's in the old house. Don't disturb him. He just wants to be in the old house. He wants to die in the old house. And uh, But don't worry him with all that religious stuff. Just go and see him. And I said, yeah, that's all right, Chaz. I was going... See him? No religious, nothing religious. You won't get one religious thing. <laughs> went to the house, went through the old squeaky gate. Probably just like the Midwest, the old gates all squeak. Old gate and the latch, you could hear it slam shut up to the front door. And it was one of those doors, a lot of flies out there. And the old fly door that never closed properly. It let the flies in, they'd get in. They always had tracks in. And it always had that spring on it that would swing it shut and it had a certain swinging noise that uh, and I walked in and in the Mallee there's a lot of dust storms and all the furniture was covered in in uh, cloth and so on and I'm looking around for Uncle John I thought where's he going to be Uncle John nothing we're right up to his bed I think it'd be in his bedroom so I went up to his room knocked on the door I come in opened the door and he looked at me and his eyes went right through me. And I'll never forget the look as long as I live. It was a look that says, where have you been? I've been waiting for you. I've been waiting for you. Where have you been? And I went over to him and I got a chair and I said, jo- Uncle John, I've come from Adelaide. I've come over to see you. And he said, that's nice of you. I said, Uncle John, I don't want to beat around the bush. I said, I'm going to be honest with you. I said, you... You know, and I know with your condition that really soon, and I didn't feel to pray for healing. I didn't, it wasn't in my heart to talk to him about healing. Just to make sure he knew where he's going for Jesus. That's that's all I wanted to do was just tell him. And I said to him, Uncle John, it's not going to be long now until you and Jesus have some time together to meet with him. And I said, I wanted to come and tell you that you can be absolutely ready and that he's going to be waiting for you. And he was an old, an old Presbyterian. He got upset with me. He said, how can you tell me that I know I can be, be saved, that I'm going to go to heaven? And I said, Uncle John, you're an old Presbyterian and God gave me a word of knowledge. He said, tell him about the old hymns. And I said, you love the old hymns, don't you? He said, yes, I do. I said, remember the, the old hymn? Amazing Grace. He said, yes, I do. I said, you know who it was written by? He said, no. I said, the man that wrote that had been a slave trader, and I think we all know the story. He'd been a violent man who actually left a Christian home, went to sea, worked his way up on ships until he became the captain of slave ships. And famously, he would write poetry to the devil and walk the decks of the ship, worshipping the devil and cursing God. So violent that bringing those human cargo of slaves, they can smell the boats coming for 10 miles. At least a third of the the human cargo died on the way and were just left rotting 
in amongst the others as they slept with all the smell and all the, the horror that went with 25% at least of, the, of the, the people dead and disease. And he would take little children that cried and he was famous for swinging their heads into the masts and throwing their bodies in the sea and even raping the women. But certainly a man that was as far gone as you could get. I said, Uncle John, he had an experience with God and he knew what happened. I said, there's a great storm rose, a massive storm. And that sailing ship was being driven to the rocks to be destroyed. And he went into his cabin and he dropped on his knees and he began to cry out to the God of his father and his mother, to Jesus, to have mercy and forgive him. And miraculously, the ship, although tremendously damaged by the, the, the huge waves and the wind, managed to get into a safe haven and be saved. And he got into, in his, there in his cabin, he knelt down and he cried out to God and thanked him. When he arrived back in England, first thing he did was get out of slavery. And then he became a preacher. Blessed Uncle John, he's most famous for writing these words, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind now I see and we've been there 10,000 years bright shining as the sun we'd no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun and I looked at him and his eyes were welling up I talked to him about my own salvation he knew I'd been wild he knew I'd been at 27 I would go over there with my cousin and and get them all going on tequila and they were all amazed how much tequila I could drink and still walk I used to drink it Every lunchtime teaching school, I'd go and line the shots up and have half a dozen shots of tequila and a whiskey chaser and probably a pint of beer and go back and teach art in the afternoon. A lot of it was abstract. <laughs> but he knew I'd been wild. And I said, do you remember the story, the, the hymn? There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunge beneath that flood lose all their guilt and stains. Was it William Cowper? Who was that? Man walked onto a bridge, took a revolver, put it to his head, couldn't shoot, threw it in the water. Took a flask of hemlock but couldn't drink it. Looked at throwing himself in and eventually walked off the bridge and he would hear the gospel. Get dramatically saved, Uncle John. And then write... There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunge beneath that flood lose all their guilt and stains. By now, Uncle John, the tears were running down his face. I said, let me pray for you. And there in that desolate desert spot, right out there in a little place called Tullibuck, Tullibuck, New South Wales, farm called Glen Innes old property way out there in the Mallee a man moved from darkness to light from one kingdom to another I went to the funeral in a little town called Nia West the preacher was a Pentecostal little Asian guy Pentecostal full on for God nice little fella just full of God and I remember sitting in there and feeling the presence of God in that room and remembering how I'd heard the Lord say to me, just drive 300 miles and see him. And I looked at the coffin and as I was looking, the light came in through the window and the light went all over the coffin. We lowered him out on that lonely cemetery like something out of a movie bunch of people, a bunch of men in suits they hadn't had since their wedding with their brill creamed hair, standing around and the ladies with their hats standing around the, that hole in the ground in Nia West up in the Mallee and they lowered him down I thought you better put a lot of dirt in because he's going to come flying out of there my cousin she's a pretty wild girl she came up to me and she said, you know, I never, ever had heard, only ever once saw my dad cry. She said, he talked to me 
about your visit to the farm. He told me how impacting it had been. In fact, when he died, he had three things in his pocket, a little Bible, some scriptures that you'd written out about his certainty of salvation, and of course his wallet, being a Scotsman, he would have that. <laughs> Hadn't been opened for 20 years, but he had that. And she said, as he told me what happened, he cried, and it's the only time I ever saw my dad cry. And I thought, Jesus, thank you that I heard your voice. And I told him. I've got to tell you one more story. Can I tell you another story? Is that okay? I'm way off track. I don't know if I can ever get back where I was going. Does it matter? Does it matter? I think, we're, I think there's something happening here where we underestimate the power of what we've experienced, what we know, but more particularly, who we know. The power of our testimony. This is the introduction to the message. I was on Guadalcanal, the island of Guadalcanal. I did two big crusades there. Started the first one with a thousand people and after five nights, we must have had 15, 20,000 people out of a city of 40,000 in the meetings. We had over 6,000 decision cards given out. Unfortunately, the printer ran out of card and we could only print that much. In the beginning, they'd had 400 printed, hoping for 400 souls. The printer ran out after 6,000. We probably had 10,000 people saved. It's my first ever major crusade. And on it, I met a first Marine old man who was there, First Marine Division, fought it at uh, the Battle of Alligator River. If you saw the, the program, the Pacific, he was an advisor to Spielberg on that program. And he was one of the he's very, very well known, a great photograph of him um, from Palalau. Uh, a picture of him that I'm not sure which magazines, but it was all over this country of him sitting with his head down, hand in his head. Most of his battalion was shot and killed. He had three machine gun bullets through his leg and a, uh, a Japanese guy had come at him with a bayonet and he'd shot him and the guy came and the bayonet went through his knee and he was critically wounded, hadn't drunk water for three days in the tropics and was near death. And they photographed him, picked him up on one of those tracks, took him back and the war was over after fighting from Guadalcanal, uh, Point Gloucester in West New Britain through the islands to Palalau in some of the worst conflicts you could imagine, but I went over all the battle sites with him. He said, I was here on that first night when a Cheeky's battalion, fresh from the, the, the uh, um, what was it, the rape of, which city was it? The rape of, in Japan, in China, the rape of Nanking, was it? They'd come from terrible time. Um, and his battalion charged all night against the Marines, young men, 17, 18 years of age. And at the end of the night, 1,200 Japanese lay dead. They were coming in Banzai charges. I said, how close were they? He said the guy next to me was killed with a samurai sword. He talked about firing grape shot um, like the wall of a barn, like a barn door, clearing the masses as they came screaming and cursing Babe Ruth and a horrendous night. But uh, he showed me the spot where he was at 17. And he took me, we went over the battle sites and he became a very close friend and he would fly over to our crusades. If I was preaching in the islands, he'd fly in. He was a wealthy man and he embraced me like a son. And a few years ago, just maybe two years ago, I was preaching over in New Hampshire, three years ago. And I was in New Hampshire and I thought, I wonder how Frank's going. I know he hasn't been well. I need to go and see Frank. And I'll borrow a car. It might be an hour, hour and a half drive from New Hampshire to... Boston, Massachusetts to Boxford, place just out of Boston. I'll drive over and I just had a, a strong impression, go and talk to him. And I went to his house and when I got there, they said he's very, very ill, Tim. He's critically ill. It's a miracle he's still here. And I went and saw him and I went into the room and he was barely conscious. But I took his hand and I said, Frank, it's Tim. And just took his hand and he... And he just acknowledged me and got a little emotional. But I talked with him. I said, Frank, 
just, you know, how much I appreciate you. And I thought he was saved. I thought he was well and truly saved. And I just didn't have that, that real... Jesus said, I only do what the Father tells me to do. You say, why didn't you pray for your Uncle John? Because I, didn't, I felt God had told me to go and introduce him. And sometimes we respond to needs instead of responding in faith to what Jesus is saying to us. Jesus said, I only do what the Father tells me. I don't go and try and raise the dead if God hasn't told me it's the right thing. Or I know Pastor Mark felt strongly, let's go and pray for John. And, and I've done that. I've gone to people and prayed for them. But even sometimes when I've been praying, I've sensed I'm not sure that this is going to happen. Other times I've had twice in our meetings, we've had people raised from the dead and it was so easy. It was like it was supposed to happen. And then I've gone other times, but I just haven't had that. My heart has said I want them raised. But I haven't had that quickening, that, that certainty. And I still went ahead with it because it's what I wanted, desperately. But I want to respond with the Spirit of God saying, Tim, that's what I want to do. Jesus always came into alignment with the Father. And sometimes we will do things because we want them and we're passionate and we pray for needs and very often we pray for a lot of needs instead of discerning where faith is and sometimes we can pray for a person who's got a need and instead of building faith we can reinforce in them unbelief because it's almost like the time's not right or something's just not there to happen so I talked with him and I thought, I said, I appreciate you, I love you. It's been so good to have time with you over the years. I knew I wouldn't see him again. And I thanked the family and walked out the door and got in my car and the Lord said, is he saved? I said, yeah, yeah, he's, he's been an elder in the Presbyterian church. He's been in the meetings. He's been, is he saved, Tim? I said, I don't know. Would you like to make certain? And I thought, he's all right. I didn't really want to go back in the house and start things up again. I thought, you know, I've sort of done my duty. And the Lord said, go back in there. And I went inside. I said, guys, could I just... To get, get, just, I just want to see Frank for five minutes. And I went in there and Frank's 80, 85, 80, 88, something like that. And I said, Frank, Jesus is coming for you soon. And I said, I've been sent from Australia just to make sure you're ready. And I said, I'm going to take you by the hand. I know you can't talk. But I'm going to pray a prayer of invitation for Jesus to be Lord center in your life to cleanse every sin you've ever committed and to be ready to meet you I said so I want you to do this as I pray if it's your prayer that I'm praying and you want that I want you to squeeze my hand so I took his hand I said is that the prayer do you want me to pray this for you and I felt him squeeze my hand he said okay each time I pray what you want me to say and you feel like it's right you squeeze my hand I said, Father, I've come on behalf of Frank. And I'm asking you today that you'd cleanse every sin that Frank ever committed. This is a guy who had killed so many Japanese in World War II. He talked of, he talked of turkey shoots where they set machine guns up and literally with a crossfire wiped out just in 10 minutes. They took 300 out just in one. And he had... He had no resentment to the Japanese. In fact, he, he had settled things there. But I guess there were things in his life. But I said, Frank, Father, Frank, would you cleanse him of every sin? And Frank squeezed my hand. And the tears started to run out of his eyes. And I said, Father, Frank wants you right now to come into his heart. Change him on the inside. He squeezed my hand, hung onto my hand. The tears start to flow. I said, he wants to know absolutely today that he's saved. And I had a little sob. And I knew that he was saved. 
I walked out of that house, tears running down my own face. So I'll never see him again. Got back to the hotel and the hotel light was blinking. Picked up the phone for messages and it was his wife. And Corinne said to me, Tim, you walked out of the house and he left, left us 10 minutes after you drove out. And the Lord said to me, you love the military. You're from a military family. He was waiting for his padre on the battlefield. And I wonder how many Franks are waiting for you and I. We have old folks' homes all around us filled with people that are waiting for someone to come and say, hey, you don't have to die and go into a lost eternity. There's old people in their homes waiting. They know they're near death and they just need someone to come and say, there's an answer. There are multitudes just in our own city waiting. There are nations waiting. They're waiting. They're waiting for evangelists. I've learned something as an evangelist. Over the years, we've ministered to, I've done, just in Papua New Guinea alone, I've done 40, 40 crusades or 40 series of meetings. One of those alone ran, paid for by the government for 23 nights and 30 odd to 40,000 saved. We've seen whole islands like Bougainville ablaze with the glory of God. Had a chance to preach to big crowds, missed a lot of opportunities. Looking back, could have done a hundred times more, but it's not a time to have any regrets, but to get on and do what you can. We've preached across the nations, but you know, there's something that happens inside you when you see people get saved that becomes an addiction. There's something, my first crusade was on Guadalcanal. My first big open air crusade was on Guadalcanal. When I landed there, I didn't really know anything about the Solomon Islands, but I, when I landed, they said, we're landing in Honiara on the island of Guadalcanal. I thought, Guadalcanal, that's the big battle site from World War II. That's where Australia was saved by the United States forces. 3,000 young American Marines died there. Young guys that fought unbelievably. When I landed, I landed on the very airstrip that had been so contested. I got out and there was the original Japanese tower on Guadalcanal. And I walked past two monuments to the American Marines and the hair on the back of my neck stood up and I thought, this is the island. And we went to the hotel and they said, we're right near the Matanakau River. It was just down here, just over here that the huge battle took place of Matanakau River. I met Frank there. And we went over all the battle sites and sat in the, sat in old Hellcat that was just like the, the wings still folded like the days at, of, of 1942. I bought Coke bottles from 1942. But I preached that first night. There were a thousand people. First ever major crusade. Second night, that first night there were some big miracles. Second night there was about 4,000. The second night the Lord spoke to me and said, the glory's coming down tomorrow night. You're going to see my glory and the weight of the glory of God came down in such measure that third night. A, a man that was on a bed, paralyzed from the neck down, fanning him, pushing people away so he could breathe. We're praying for people over here. Suddenly he stood up on his feet and rolled up his bed and came up on the platform and the people started screaming and throwing crutches and sticks onto the platform and, and the power of God hit that place and there's something when you're in a meeting where it seems like heaven has come as a holy invasion and disease and devils realize that they no longer have a place. One kingdom takes over and the other kingdom surrenders meekly like those demons and the pigs. On the fifth night, 
I shared my testimony. There was no room for an altar call. We didn't have any space for an altar call. The, st- the grandstands were filled. The crowds were packed to the fence. The only place we could take the souls that got saved was put them around the fence. And I walked around the fence that night. There have been so many miracles, so many miracles. And I walked around, there's about 4,000, 5,000 got saved that last night. I'd never seen anything like it. And I walked around and those beautiful island people, tears streaming down their faces like silver, like mercury, streaming down their faces, being baptized in the Spirit. And I walked past them and God said, do you remember when Abraham went under the stars? And I remember Yongi Cho preaching that all the stars began to cry out, Father Abraham! Abraham never saw them. But he said, don't you know that you've been grafted into the Abraham and his vision's your vision? You're seeing the stars. These are Abraham's stars so long ago and I walked around there and I got an addiction I, I'm an addicted person addicted to seeing people get saved addicted to seeing them turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to the power of God God's looking to do a work of evangelism here in this place. God is wanting to release a spirit of evangelism. I'm going to talk about the miraculous over this weekend and Monday and Tuesday, and don't miss it. Don't miss a meeting. Because stuff's going to be imparted and stuff's going to be released. But I, I feel like in this first of our meetings... And I do believe that this is a significant few days. I believe that God wants to freshly stir us for the lost. Let me say, if we don't have a burden for the harvest, we should have a good look to see that we're not still part of it. If you really want to know who Jesus is, He's called the Lord of the harvest. It's the Lord of his harvest. He weeps over the multitudes for whom he died so fiercely, horribly on that Roman cross, tortured to death with a scourge and a cross that we might respond to what he did, shedding the blood to redeem I watched Mel Gibson's movie a few years ago. I could only ever watch it once. When the scourging scene was on, I wept like a baby and I said, God, you've got to forgive me for my total lack of response to the cross. My total lack of response. My insipid failure to respond. Why are our countries in so much trouble? Why has America got so many problems? Why has Australia got so many problems? Why is the Western world in such a mess? Because of the church's insipid response to the work of Calvary. We have the governments we deserve. But God is on the throne. Someone say, God's on the throne. God's on the throne. I, um, I've still got a whole sermon left here. But it's Mother's Day and I've probably preached long enough. First thing is this. Let's bow in prayer for a moment. It's Mother's Day. I wonder how many people under the sound of my voice this Mother's Day would say, Jesus... I am not living for you. I don't even know if I'm saved. I've been a churchgoer, but that's all there is. 
I don't know if I'm clean, washed clean. I don't know if I died right now, if I'd be saved. But I want Jesus today. You say I'm backslidden. Tim, if you just knew my heart today, I look like a Christian, I act like a Christian, but I'm like one of those that Paul spoke of who walk as though we are, but we're actually our own desires are our God. And Paul said our end is destruction. Shall grace abound? Shall sin abound? Shall grace abound over sin? May it never be. Maybe you're sitting here today and you know about Jesus. You've never found him. You've never had that thrill of knowing Christ, the living Christ, the risen, resurrected Jesus and all his power by the power of the Holy Spirit actually come and dwell you. This is your moment. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Every person under the sound of my voice who would say, Jesus, I want to come back to you. I want to give my life to you today. Lift your hand quickly. Just lift it up wherever you are so I can see it nice and high. Would you do that? God bless you. God bless you. Is there someone else? You may put it down. Thank you. Is there someone else? You say, that's me. Just lift it high. Would you lift your hand and say, that's me today? Is there someone else? Yeah, I see another hand there. God bless you. They put that down. Thank you. Thank you, little person over there. God bless you. Is there someone else? Someone else. You know, the great challenge is to be reaching out to people, bringing people to church, getting people in the presence of God. Is there anyone else? I want us all to stand together for a couple of moments. And those people that lifted their hand, I want you to do something with me. I want you to leave your place for a moment. Each one that lifted their hand, in 30 seconds, I want you to just come down here to the front. I'd love to pray for you. Before you do, all across the building, turn to the person next to you and say, if you've lifted your hand and you'd like to go, I'll go with you. I'll go with you. And then just come. Are there those quickly? Would you come? Would you come? Would you come? That's it. That's it. That's it. Turn to them and say, if you want to go and give your life to Christ, I'll go with you. I'll go with you today. That's it. Just come. Is there someone else? Just come right up this way. Don't be, come and join us up here. Come up, sister. Is there someone else? Is there someone else? Just come right up. Don't be nervous. That's it. Come up. Bring her up. That's it. Come up here, sister. Come and join us. Have you done this before, sir? No. First time. God bless you. What's your name? Good to meet you. you where were you born what country that's your son where were you born in the philippines which city i've preached in cebu and i've preached in a few places there philippines great especially i don't like balut much have you done this before sir well the hand of god's on you Bring him up here. The Spirit of God's going to touch him. What's, what's, have you done this before? Yes? Done this before, kids? You've come to give your heart to Jesus to come back. Sister, you've done this before? Yeah. Okay, we're going to pray this prayer, and then God's going to touch you. Pray this with me. I've been very gentle today. I've been just like a, I've been like just a summer breeze today. Very <laughs> gentle. That can change. That can change. It can sneak up on you. Pray this with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God, that He died on a Roman cross to cleanse me from every sin that I have ever committed. Today, Lord Jesus, I open the door of my heart. I ask You to come in to change me to make me new. I give you my life. I am yours. You are mine. 
My sins are gone. Heaven is on me. Heaven is in me. Jesus' name. My friend, the power of God's going to go through your body like holy fire right now. Just lift your hands. Power from heaven. There's healing on you, sister. You better just stay right with us here because the power of God's strong. There's healing in your body today. There's healing in your body right through you. Right through your bloodstream, there's an anointing. Right through your cardiovascular system, there is an anointing right now. It's from heaven. It's from heaven. And it's alive with the fire of the Holy Ghost. Watch this lady here quickly. Watch this lady. Power of God's on it. Come quickly. Jesus, the anointing right through you. Father, let him feel the power of God like a fire. Holy Spirit of God. There it is. That's it. Don't drop him. Now he's been here for the first time. Now he's on the floor. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Man from the Philippines. Power <laughs> How you going, bro? You having a good day? What's your name again? I know you, don't I? G'day, Matty. How are you? Power of God's on you, brother. Better step back a little, sister. Sometimes it can be dangerous just getting too close. <laughs> I tell you, the anointing's on you. And it's getting stronger. It's actually getting quite strong right now. It's actually just in... Brother, power from heaven right through you. Yeah, have, some, have it. Have it. Jesus. Power from heaven right through you. It could get quite serious here in a moment. I've been so gentle on you today. So gentle. Like it's just a summer breeze. But that can turn into a tornado very quickly how you doing Kate looking good power from heaven just reach out to God reach out reach out oh I feel the stay with me there bro Jezza. It took me a minute. Come in there, Jezza. What are you doing? Where are you going? Jesus. <laughs> Power from heaven through sister. There we go. Jesus, on the sister, on the sister. Hello, Liz. How are you? Come here. Hi there. Lovely Lizzie. Yeah. Jesus. Thank you. Ellie, how do you look at these kids? You got an iPad. What is that? The Bible. some levels of intoxication here. <laughs> Over here. Over here. There's just something happening. Over here. It's getting quite strong. Over here. Over here. It's just getting strong. Over here.
Sister Sunglasses, come up this way quickly. Jesus. It's an anointing on Sister Sunglasses, no question about that. Jesus. There she is. She's over. She's over. Are you having a good morning? Heavy intoxication. Heavy, holy intoxication. Sister, how are you? Sister, look up here. This one, yeah. Look up. Look up. Fill with power. Yeah, drink it in. Yeah. 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 Yes. Enjoy that. I mean, no, enjoy that. Jesus. I mean, enjoy it. No, let the power of God, let the power of God bubble right out of your belly. I mean, let the power of God bubble right out of your belly, Phil. I mean, let the anointing bubble right now. Right now. My God, the anointing. My God, the power of heaven, like a fire. to heal right now. There's an anointing to heal.
reach out. Power from heaven. Healing power right through you. Power from heaven. Okay. Now reach out to God. Reach out to God. We're having, we're enjoying Him, but I want you to reach out for more. I want you to reach out for more. It's one thing to get touched. We want more now. We're wanting more now. We're wanting more. We're hungry. Not just for the touch of God. We want a miracle right now. We want a miracle right now. We want a miracle right now. Hallelujah. Someone shout hallelujah. Someone shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, okay. Father, the anointing right now, right now, through bones, through bones, joints, ligaments. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to do something simple. I could... I could go down there and lay hands on you. The Bible says Jesus sent his word and healed them. So we're going to do something in the house together. Each one of us, my Bible says, these signs shall follow them that believe. Is there a believer here? There's certain things follow you. Signs and wonders follow. Goodness and mercy follows. They follow. They follow you around. You're being followed. You're being stalked. You're being stalked by signs. And stalked by wonders. And stalked by goodness. And stalked by mercy. Stalked. Stalked. So I'm very heavy stalking. But now here's what we're going to do. These signs shall follow. Jesus sent their word and he healed them. He said, have the God kind of faith. For if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you'll say to this mountain, get up and move and go into the sea. And if you doubt not, but you believe that what you say will come to pass, you will have whatsoever. Whosoever shall have whatsoever. Is there a whosoever? Is there a whosoever that would like a whatsoever? Here's what we're going to do. If you need a miracle, stand to your feet and lift your hands. Now, if you, if, you, if you need the miracle, put your hands up. If you don't, we'll worship in a minute. We just Okay, so I want at least two people to go to everyone with hands raised. This is a healthy church. You know how I know that? Most churches I go to, I say, anyone's sick, put up your hand. And the whole church puts their hands up. Plus a whole bunch of people coming off the street. The pastor puts his hands up. The whole family put their hands up. The dog next door puts its hands up. Everything that moves, and then you've got no one to pray for the ones that are sick. So you just get them praying for each other. But that's another story for another day. I want you, Here's what we're going to do. You are not just the prayer, if, but you're going to be maybe, if they start to go under the power, the catcher, the encourager, the one who will stir them to act their faith. So I'm going to do what I would do on a big crusade right now. This is what I'm going to do. We're going to declare together the miracle power of God. Then you're going to pray for that person. And then we're going to have a shout. The Bible says, clap your hands, all your people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. What is triumph? It's total victory. It's total dominion. It's total, I have it. It's total, there's the breakthrough. It's the total one kingdom's knocking another kingdom out of the game. Total dominion is pigs running down the mountain squealing. Total dominion is the, sh the clap of triumph is a disease going out of your body because someone with authority just said, get. 
So if you need a miracle, lift your hands. And I want a couple of people. Brother Spitzbergen could use a touch in one of his knees. So somebody go and just clamp a hand on his knee. I'm getting one in my knee, slow but sure. Ten years ago they said you need new knees. I said I'll get my own, thanks very much. You get yours sorted out, I'll get mine. That's a fair, fair deal. All right, we're going to pray, but it's not going to be a prayer of Jesus, please come and do it. Jesus said, I've given you my name and I've given you my power. You go and do it. So we're doing it. We're doing it. We can't get mad at Jesus and say, you didn't do it. He told us to do it. He told his disciples, you perverse generation, get on with the job. So that's what we're doing. So we're going to take dominion and then we're going to have a shout of triumph. And as we're shouting, I want you to move it. Move it, move it. Because you like to move it in Jesus' name. Are you ready? Everybody pray. Father, there is power in the house. There's authority in the house. All power. Give it in the name of Jesus. You've given us the name. You've given us your power. We are immersed in your dunamis power. And now in that name, and by that power, heal we pray, all through the building. Miracles now. 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 Now get now. Yeah, now, 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 now. Now give the Lord a great clap offering. Give the Lord a great clap offering. Great clap offering. Great, 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 great clap offering. Come on now. Hallelujah. 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 Now, now move it. Move it. Move it. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. In Jesus' name, I'll move it. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. In Jesus' name, I'll move it. Move it, move it. Move it now. It'll move. It'll move. Give it a bend, it'll bend. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. This mountain will get up and move. Brother, you still got the anointing on you. Power! Hey, I, I tell you, the anointing here is tangible. Randy, feel it! He's over. He's over. He's gone through the window. Randy's out of the building. Just left stage left. Exit stage left. Randy White has now left the building. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. it. Receive it. All right, hands down. If you just got healed of something, give me a wave. Give me a wave if God just touched you with something. What's happened, sister? What's happened? No more pain. No more pain. Who else just got healed? You just got healed. Give me, what happened? Is that sister healed? You feel free. That's good. Who else just got healed of something? Give me a wave. 
Not all at once. We don't want anyone shouting out so many at once. Who else got healed? Who else has got healed? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who's been touched? What happened? Hip. Lift up your hands, Geneva. Have you met that young lady? Dave, you better come in behind her. Geneva, head to toe. Power! Don't have it anymore. Power! She's over. Landing on grandkids. A lot of fun over there. Have you had a good day, my brother? Having a good day? Step there. See that line? Don't come over it. Go right behind it. That's it. It's too dangerous to come over. Are you game to come over? Are you game to step over? Just step over carefully. Power from heaven. See, it's dangerous. Dangerous place is just over that line. Look at all these kids growing up. What do you feed them on around here? They used to come up there about this big. Pastor Tim, can you draw me an elephant with uh, wings? Yes. What would you like? I'd like six dolphins and a hairy nose wombat. Yes. Now look, you're all grown up. Caleb, he used to, he used to ask me, didn't you, Caleb? He'd say, "Oh, can I get this, that, kangaroo?" Then he came up one day and said, "Good day, Pastor Tim. A drawing? No, thanks. Too old now. Too old." Let God touch you where you are. See, sometimes we can just talk like this. I love to just, just let the love of Jesus flow. 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 Hallelujah. Flow. Hallelujah. 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 Have you enjoyed church today, sir? Are you coming back? He's coming back. Is this your first day? Oh, you've been here for a while. Thank you. I met you before, I think. Thank you, Lord Jesus. How are you? That's uh, helped me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah. Good to see you again. You doing well? What's been Thank happening? You, Lord Jesus. you love the Lord? Thank you, Lord Jesus. <sighs> Still Thank in love you, with Lord Jesus? Jesus? Just tell everybody how much you love him. For God so loved the world that he only gave his only begotten son. So whoever believes on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Isn't that the truth? Isn't that the truth? One of my all-time favorites, Jesus. Jesus, look at all these kids just... They used to be kids, now look at them all. Now hang on, that's Caleb. That's Caleb. More Caleb's around here than you could shake a stick at. Look at old Jono over there. How are you, my friend? You doing all right? Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, great to see you. You remember when it used to be, hello, Pastor Tim, how are you? <laughs> hello, Pastor Tim. Now it's, yeah, hi, Pastor Tim, how you doing? My kids used to laugh at all my jokes. Then after a while they go, Dad, you're so embarrassing. I did a whole book of crazy cartoons for my youngest daughter and sent them to her. And she rang my, her, her brother up and said, is there something wrong with dad? Is he dying or something? Has he flipped? We think dad's lost it. We're just worried about dad. Just let the love of God touch you. Go and win someone to Jesus today. Isn't love wonderful? Look at Ruthie Ann. I've known her since she was knee-high to a grasshopper. She'd say, hi, Pastor Tim. Pastor Tim's good to have I got there for her graduation from school and the graduation from uni. I missed the big day, though, didn't I? I still haven't even given you a wedding present. Look at the old Kate. He's pretty happy with himself. He's, he's, and where's Dan the man? Where's Summer, Dan? 
He's been, he's happy. He, he hasn't stopped grinning since I saw him. He's got a beautiful girl. And Josh, he's, when God said, go forth and multiply the earth, he's got kids, look, all dressed in the same. You know his kids. And Ali, Josh's done a good job and Ali's helping. <laughs> we men have to take the glory for having children. What a beautiful congregation, Pastor Mark. Isn't it wonderful that we can just enjoy God? We're going to thump in for miracles, though. We had about two things happen this morning. That's about not much, but you say you're worried about that? No, we'll just go harder tonight. Never get upset about anything. Get one thing happen, you go rejoicing. Someone's had pain go out of their body. I'm rejoicing. Had some nights where so many sticks and crutches passed over the meeting that I couldn't hold. I, I stopped holding them about nine or ten, and we had other guys collecting them, and they just kept coming. Other nights, you might see something. But you never, ever do anything but go, hey, we're moving forward. Hello. How are you? Look at these children. Every young person here under the age of 12, come here, please. 13 and under, just come. That's it. 13 and under. You guys all look the same. All off the same production line. There's no problems. You didn't get the red hair, though. How'd you miss that? <laughs> I'd have been in for that. I wouldn't mind red hair. I'm just happy to still have hair. Make it a straight line, kids. I'm going to pray for every one of you. It's, that's sort of a... Great to have the deacons running in to organise this. They're just like gazelles, like startled gazelles. Dashing in, dashing in. How many grandkids you got now, Dave? Good job, man. Very, very well done. It's impressive. And he, yeah. All the kids married? Are they spreading the numbers out or are some of them a bit slow off the mark? Spreading them good? No, well done. All right, lift your hands up, kids. Say, today's my day. I want a touch of the power of God. Where's my guys? Where's my guys on the job? That's it. Jesus. Jesus, the anointing. Take it all. Hello, beautiful. Jesus. Touched. Stay with me, guys. Jesus. Jesus. Hello, champion. What's your name? You married? <laughs> You're single. Jesus. Can I pray for you now? Jesus. He's over. Oh, hello, champion. I like your T-shirt. Jesus. Hi, champ. What's your name? You love Jesus, Jacob? He loves you. Let the power of God go right through you. I did a children's camp a while ago. At our conference, Planet Shakers Conference, I do one night for the kids. And there's a thousand or a couple of thousand kids. And I do cartoons. And then we, every kid in the room was under the power of God. And these great long lines. And uh, the parents were coming to get them and falling out under the power of God. All the leaders were out under the power of God. Some of the parents couldn't get back. They were falling over on the lawn. Best meeting of the whole conference it was. Jesus. Power in the belly. Jesus. Jesus. Hello. Hello. How many kids you got? Good job. Good job. Touch him, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 
Let the blessing of God just come on this little guy. Look, he's got, he's pushing the hand on. He wants it. He loves it. He's loved in all. What a champion. What's your name again? How are you, Luke? He says, all right. Thanks for asking. Hello, gorgeous. What's your name? Jesus, just touch her right now. Touch her. Aren't children beautiful? Aren't they beautiful? I'd like some more. Jackie's 70. I'm going to have a talk to her when I get home. Good enough for Sarah. Good enough for us. Hello. Jesus blessed. Watch out for mum. She's over. You're nearly over. No, mum's all right. She's just, hold her up. That's it. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. Blessing. Hello. Jesus, the anointing. Touch dad, Father. Just filled. 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 Jesus. Yeah, over they go. Isn't it wonderful? We all right, Pastor? I'm just doing my thing. Grandfatherly. Just granddad stuff now. We've gone from intense to just granddad stuff. Is that on the rule book? Violent wind. Gentle. Hello, Annie. I remember when you were born. Hello. Naomi. Hello. Just touch Naomi, Father. Let the power of God go right through Naomi. Jesus' name. And Annie. Jesus. Touch her. Touch her. Touch Annie. Let the power go right through her. Jesus. There she goes. You're right. Ah. Jesus. Oh. This one's a, a junior. Gee, they're alike, aren't they? As they've got older, they're just. Jesus. <sighs> Hello. Jesus. Touch my brother with the eldest head. That looks very good. <laughs> Jesus. Touched. There we are. It's all yours. That's it. Hello. Jesus. Hey, champion. Is that you? What happened? Boom. Growth. A growth spurt. Jesus. Hello. You're a very powerful young man. What's your name? Alex, you've got a lot of muscles there. How'd you get so strong? Uh, fair enough. Jesus. Touch you. Touch you. Touch you right now, Lord. Touch you. Aha! Keep it up with them all. Doing good? Jesus, the power of God right now. Hello. Jesus. Love the church. It's always good to come to church with a chimpanzee on your chest. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. You got a shirt with a chimpanzee on it as well? I must get one. Let me get one. Jesus, just touch me. Hello. Happy. Jesus. Jesus, just touch him. Touch him. Can we bring the others through? We're going to finish off then, just down the front. I'm going to hand back to Pastor Mark. Bless you, Reverend. Thanks, everybody. See you tonight. Everybody, listen, there's a realm of glory the Lord wants you to walk in that it calls joy that go beyond anything that is in the human realm. So just keep yourself over there in that place. Touched. Come prepared tonight. Touched. Let the Lord, the power of the Holy Ghost come Touched. upon you. In the wonderful realms Touched. of prophecy, tongues, interpretation of tongues, and all the things of heaven Touched. flow out of you. Find a bunch of people Whoops, around you. Him, hug them. Tell them that you love them. Bless them in Jesus' name. Tonight, prayer at 5 o'clock. Service at 6.